Today's podcast is brought to you by Quantrix Modeler Introductory Training, teaching the fundamental foundation that you need to become a Quantrix Master. Go to QuantrixAuthority.com to learn more. Show me, show me, show me how you do Quantrix. Hey, welcome back to another netcast. I'm Rich Lopez, Quantrix Authority. Sincerely appreciate you joining me today for episode number 212, Summary Items and the Summary Function, Complex Examples. So in episode number 211, I went into some somewhat deep detail in how to use uh, summary items in Quantrix. Again, you generate those using the Sigma signal, signal as well as you can select a range of cell, select a range of items, and go ahead and right click and insert summary. You can also do as I'm doing here, and that is right click on any category and insert a summary item. And what it does is by using the summary item and using a summary in a function, which it populates automatically, you ignore any other summary items that are calculated using this summary kind of nested function within your other mathematical aggregate functions, okay? So again, what was happening is this sum of members, it's taking a sum of these numbers here and a sum of these numbers. It's ignoring the totals here because again, with the totals, I'm using summary and with sum of member, I'm using summary as a nested function of my sum. And Quantrix knows to one, ignore itself and ignore any other uh, summary uh, calculated items. So how does this work in a complex complex example? All right. So let's say that I have a, mat a two matrices. I have one that has a list of parts and then I have some replenishment steps. And I have it going across month and year and week. And what I want to do is I want to go out and I want to figure out how many max replenishments I sent in the year, okay? I want to know what the maximum amount I sent any week of the year is. So I have here uh, some timeline, right? But I also have over here a timeline of year. And what I want to do in H1 is I want to go out and get the maximum amount that I sent. So in order to make this happen, I go ahead and I use of course, I use some summary here to create this sum of replenishment that gives me a total of all of the replenishment steps for this part, right, which is 163, and I can see that down in the corner, and so on and so forth here. This should be 241. It is. So this summary item here is, is really just that. It's a summary item that's giving me the aggregation across all of my replenishment steps for each individual part, okay? Well, in my calculations of total shipments, I don't want to calculate, the, I don't want to consider this number here, right? So I would be tempted maybe to say that, uh, before I go to there, I may be tempted to say that H1 is equal to the max of my replenishment steps here, okay? If I go ahead and I hit that, then I see 342. And I go, well, is that right? I know it's not right because the numbers that I put in here are actually between 10 and, and 100 just randomly. But let me just demonstrate, let me show you how I also another way that I can check and know that this 342 is not correct. I can go ahead and turn on the always on pivot functionality of Quantrix Modeler. And if I go ahead and I bring year up here, and I want to have year one. I'm going to sort this descending. And yes, indeed, 342 is the high number, right? But that's because it's occurring in this sum of replenishment number, which is an aggregate. That's not correct. I wanted to bring back this one here that says that the max is associated with some legitimate step, not some aggregate or summarized step, okay? So how do I get to this max that equals 100 and ignore these summary items. Well, the way I would do that is, again, I have my max here. I want it to pull the max, but I want it to ignore the summary items. So what I'm going to type in here is I'm going to type in summary. And again, as I taught in the previous episode, when I type in summary, Quantrix knows to go out and ignore 
any items that are calculated with summary when I am using a summary over here. So if I were to go out here and I were to delete all these 100s, I expect 99 to be the next highest value. And indeed it is if I go ahead and let's say I just made this like 520 for kicks and giggles, then that now becomes the highest value. And again, that's not associated, that 520 is not a summary item. It's actually associated with the replenishment step four. So again, if I'm, I'm trying to perform some sort of calculation where I want to get the max or I, maybe I want to get the min, but I don't want to consider these uh, summary items, then go ahead and throw the summary function in as a nested function inside of your aggregation and you should come back with the number that you desire. Anyway, I hope you find that useful. If you have any questions about this or about any other concepts in Quantrix, I'm offering you a free service here. You can reach out to me at quantrixauthority at gmail.com and I will honestly try to answer your question because I want to make you a Quantrix master. So I hope that you'll join me again for another episode of Quantrix Authority with Richard Lopez because I love Quantrix.